Our guest is the heavyweight boxing champion of the world. He is truly a superior fighter. Cassius Clay won the championship by defeating all contenders and then by knocking out Sonny Liston. Cassius Clay has been in the headlines many times and for different reasons. He has just returned from overseas where he visited Egypt, Ghana, Nigeria. He now is known as Muhammad Ali. We'll start the questioning with Georgiano Kane of the New York World Telegram. You have said, I want peace, and I do not find peace in an integrated world. Are you opposed to integration? Well, yes, ma'am, in a way when it is forced integration, when, it's, when it brings about death of people, especially my people, and people being beat by clubs and pushed and ducked in water and beaches and people come up disappearing and blow it up in churches, then I don't like that. Then what is your answer for the uh, American Negro? Well, my answer uh, would direct to uh, qu uh, the answer of our leading teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He has been taught by God, as he teaches us, that the only solution to the race problem in America, whether you like it or not, is total separation. And every day the whites are proving it. I understand that they are uh, gunning to pass a civil rights bill, and the closer they get to passing it, the more violent the people get. And this will, this will really help to uh, keep it back. And uh, uh, the so-called Negroes are asking for peace, and every day they're not fighting back. They love everybody, but they're steady being mistreated, so there's only one solution, is to separate. Now, you recently said that every black man in America should come see Africa. Quote, that's where home is, unquote. That's right. Are you planning to move to Africa and make it your home? Well, I would love to, but as our leader teach, when we do go, we're going to have the whole 22 million. Uh, we won't leave. But... Uh, uh, yes, Africa. I was surprised to see Africa, to see all the colleges and universities and how civilized and educated the people were. And uh, I, would, uh, uh, I didn't see one savage or I didn't see one uh, uncivilized person. Everybody was so clean and respectable and it's really unbelievable. We'll have a question now from Gay Pauly. Uh, Mr. Clay, uh, you're a hero uh, to your own race. I'm just wondering why you're staying aloof from the civil rights struggle in the South? Well, for one reason, I don't want to get killed. That's a good reason. And uh, we are, for all of our people, we want to see all of our people, the whole 22 million, receive freedom, justice, and equality. And we have various leaders who have different ways of going about getting freedom for what they think is freedom. But after hearing the teachings of our leader, the only way we can be free is the first uh, number one is to respect ourselves, do something for ourselves, and most of all, protect our women, which is something my men don't do. And after hearing these things, well, then we don't, we feel real foolish getting coffee poured on us and in the eyes of the intelligent world begging for a job or begging for a cup of coffee when other people are controlling their own governments and their land. So this don't look, this is not nothing to us. But as a, as a hero, uh, don't you think that uh, participation in the sit-ins and the demonstrations might uh, uh, do some good rather than uh, uh, you setting off uh, ignoring the whole thing? I'm not ignoring it. I'm, I'm with the freedom movement. I'm with the I'm with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and he's the only leader in America who's bold enough to really speak the truth. I'm sure you admit that. And uh, he will be here speaking soon, and I will be there. And these are the things I participate in, going to other countries, talking to people such as President Nasser, President Kwame Nkrumah, talking to people who, have, uh, who control the world. This is what I call freedom and dem good demonstrations. And uh, these things I do, and it just cheapens me, the world heavyweight champion, to be in some restaurant trying to get a cup of coffee. When they get there, I'm going to need to buy the coffee. When I get in, I'm not going to like the music on the jukebox. Deep in your heart, you don't want me there, so that's foolish. What is your attitude toward the white man, really? Well, I can't really say what my attitude is. I don't, uh, that's not for me to say. I'd have to, you could put that question on our leader, and he could give you a good answer. Sarah Slack, Amsterdam News. Muhammad Ali. I'd like to ask you the most obvious question. When are you going to defend your title, and whom will you fight? Well, I may defend my title again against Sonny Liston in four months, and uh, uh, I really don't care who I fight, but it's only the tax things that hold me back. If it's up to me, I'd fight every day, but uh, I don't know when the next one will be, really. In the March 6th issue of Life magazine, 
Your trainer, Angelo Dundee, speaking of you, said this, quote, his greatest thrill is hamming it up in front of a crowd. That's why I hate to bring him to New York. New York is beyond him. It's too big. There are too many things to distract him. My question, Muhammad Ali, do you agree with the statement by your trainer, and is New York too much for you? No, New York is not too much for me. Uh, New York, I would say, is not enough for me before I can. Uh, New York is too small for me. I mean, I like to travel, and uh, recently we were invited to 14 nations by the governments, and I was so tired after the welcomes, after three of them, I couldn't go no farther. And, uh, I'm a worldly man. Can't, one city can't be too much for me. My mind is too big. Would you clear this up for me, please? Have you and Malcolm X, the man who helped convert you to the black Muslim movement, have the two of you split? Well, number one, it's not black Muslim. It's Muslim. Black is the name given to it by the press. It's not black Muslim. It's Muslim. And, uh, uh, and uh, when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad cuts a man off, well, then he's automatically cut off with all of his followers. And uh, a lot of people call it a split. It's not a split. He's just one individual who, as we say, went astray. And uh, when, a, when, say, like two governments split, one leader takes half, another leader takes half. Malcolm X is just there, and this is not a split. It's not, he's not big enough to be called a split. Well, my newspaper carried a story saying upon your return from Africa, you refused to stay at the Teresa Hotel, your former headquarters. Well, that's right. My leader told me, not my leader, but various officials said that it wouldn't be nice being in the same hotel that he was in, and whatever they say, go. Georgiana O'Kane, New York World Telegram. Uh, you, you just said that uh, your leader, Elijah Muhammad, has a program uh, that is the final answer for American Negroes. Can you give us one or two points in this program? Well, what I would say is that time will tell. You have 22 million people wanting to integrate, pushing integrating, and dying for integration, and what they want. And when they don't get it, and when you get tired of beating them side the head with clubs, when you get tired of putting dogs on them, when you get tired of killing them, well, it won't be for one way for them to turn, and that's too our leading teacher. How do you feel about the, uh, the white persons who are risking danger right now to help the Negro integrate? Well, they, uh, I feel that you have one or two people acting other than themselves, but uh, we have people such as New York City, Los Angeles, California, Chicago, all of these good northern cities. I don't see why they can't go on down and straighten out a few bad people. I can't let one or two people blind me to uh, facts and reality. Many of the people who are now uh, working in the South to help the Negro voters register are white persons. Do you, do you feel these people are allies of yours and of your religion? No, they, they're good people and for the cause they're fighting, uh, uh, they believe they're right and that's all right. We have millions of people out of jobs. We have millions of people homeless and, and there's the economical situation of the country is going and just the integration and the right to go in a restaurant is not going to solve nothing. Um, uh, Mr. Clay, a man's religion, of course, is a very personal thing, but would I be prying too much if I ask you why your conversion from Christian to Muslim? First of all, I'm going to say I have a new name now. It's Muhammad Ali. Ali, yes. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, after hearing the leading our teacher, after he teaches us all about, we are a nation of 20 million people that have no knowledge of self, that's a fact. We're a nation of 22 million people that have other names than our own kind, that's a fact. We're a nation of 22 million people who uh, have no unity among us whatsoever, that's a fact. We're a nation of 22 million people that no one wants to be bothered with or even socialized with, that's a fact. We're a nation of 22 million people who are from another land, and when we were in that land, we had a religion, we had a name, we had a God. And after hearing the teachings of our leader, a man's mind is never the same again. Mm -hmm. And you can't help from uh, being converted to the religion of Islam because I just, I was invited to 14 Islamic countries, and these people uh, uh, are the oldest people on the planet, so whatever, whatever they had was first, so whatever they had, must be better than something 2,000 years old. Uh, to get back to your attitude toward the white man, uh, you've been quoted as saying, why should I hate the white man because the uh, white man's money made me what I am. Is, uh, uh, was that? Uh, no, I've never said that. You've never said that? Not like that. They, they, they call us people, 
They call us, uh, they say Muslims hate people. That sounds real ignorant on the part of a white saying something like that when, when as a whole, uh, we are the victims of hate. We are the ones that are hated. And we're the ones who are stoned and blowed up and killed and beat up every day and mistreated like animals, so we can't be no haters. If, if uh, they call our leader hate teacher, if the black people don't hate the white people after 400 years, then it's too late for somebody to teach them hate. Muhammad Ali, while you were in Cairo, a pamphlet about Elijah Muhammad's Muslim movement was prepared and distributed by our United States Embassy there. According to reliable reports, this pamphlet is uncomplimentary and attacks Elijah Muhammad's Muslim movement. Did you see this pamphlet while you were visiting no, the UAR? No, <clears throat> ma'am, I did not see that pamphlet, and I don't believe that's true. Uh, anybody attacking the army Elijah Muhammad would be run out of Egypt. I talked to President Nasser and all kind of Islamic officials of the scholars and the Al-Azhar, the oldest college in Egypt, and everybody sends their greetings and their love, and he, and he was welcome, a open invitation to come to Cairo whenever he can, he and his family, and everybody talks about him all day, and they just love him. And I don't see, I don't, that's, and that's not true. Uh, while you were in Egypt, you were quoted as saying, how is it going to look when I go home to my hometown and am treated uh, like, a, like an animal? No. Are you mistreated in this country? No, ma'am. I'm never treated like an animal. No one, no one will lay a hand on me. But uh, I didn't say exactly that. Uh, that's one thing that I know that our leader teaches the truth about when he, he says that the average person here is hypocritical and lie. I've said so many things that were actually straight out twisted. And, and uh, uh, but I said that uh, uh, many of our people, it's not, it's, it's a plain fact how our people are treated here in this country. Uh, you feel that many of your people are treated like animals, but that you yourself have not been, is that, uh, uh, is no, that true? No, they're not, they're not treated like animals as long as they stay in the place. As soon as they get out of the place, then they might get killed. Muhammad That's Ali, a fact. Excuse me, a few minutes ago, you, in answer to a question from Gabe Pauly, you kept saying, we're a nation. We're a nation. You said that about four or five times, and I'm curious. When you say we, uh, Negro people, are a nation, are you apart from the American nation? Do you I'll feel that it. you're separate? Well, our leader teaches us that we are a nation within a nation. There are 27 million people in Egypt, and there are about that many Negroes in America, so-called Negroes. Well, if you have 27 million black people here, then that's a nation within a nation. It's a fact that this is not our nation. Every day that's proved by whites, part of whites, that this is not our nation. That you don't consider yourself first an American? No, sir. No, first, sir. First, you are what? Proud to say no. First, I'm a black man. I'm an Afro-American. See, if a Chinese is born there, he's called a Chinese American. If an Indian is born no, there, he's called no, Indian American. he may American. be called an American of Chinese origin. Depends on how you want to put it. Well, I'm not no American. I'm a black man. I, it, I wouldn't want to chief of myself like that because my country is old, is a, can't date the history of my people and I would be cutting my history off if I just say I'm American first and that's only 510 years old. Mm -hmm. So I'm proud to say I'm an African. I see. Well, Sarah Sly. Well, how would you describe Reverend Martin Luther King? What do you think of him? Well, I think he's a nice man and what he's fighting for is what he think is right and they all our brothers, our leader teaches us, but they are just going after it the way they see. Uh, it would disgrace me to see my leader sitting in the car with a dog gardening. So I don't, they, they all right, but we just don't follow those kind of leaders. In just a moment, we'll have more questions for our guest, the heavyweight boxing champion of the world, Muhammad Ali, better known as Cassius Clay. We'll be right back. We'll have a question now from Gay Pauley, women's editor, United Press International. Uh, Muhammad Ali, uh, this nation of 22 million Negroes you keep talking about, where is it going? Well, I mean, I'm, where will it eventually settle? Well, I'm Back not, I'm not, I'm not our, uh, I'm not our leader. He has a whole blueprint to all of this. I don't know why they won't offer my hour two on TV to explain it right, but uh, we have offered him on TV. Uh, I think you should know. And he has indicated that he would like to come on a program, and uh, he will be on a program on a date to be announced. Oh, but good. you were saying. That's mm -hmm. good. That's good. But um, 
uh, he teaches us that we are a nation within a nation. And uh, he teaches us this is a spiritual thing that Almighty Allah, which is the proper name of God, Allah, he himself is in this. He has a hand in everything that's happening here today. And that like when the people, when Moses came to teach the people of Egypt land, uh, he wasn't worried about where he was going to take them. He just said, my God, say, let my people go. We are tired of being killed, slaved, kicked, beat, mistreated, and stoned. My God said, let us go. And where we'll go is uh, not really my concern. I'm not worried about that. First, we just want to see our people <coughs> free, and then we'll take that next step. Well, in that connection... I have heard him say, divide America. After 410 years of free slave labor without pay, you just owe us. You've got 50 of the richest states in the world that our people helped build with their sweat and blood. So since there are cotton pickles doing them the work of 50 and 60 people, there are no jobs, and it's plain that they can't get freedom under your laws, then just let them separate. That makes sense. Muhammad Ali, your expressed purpose, you stated, for your five-week tour of Africa was to make your pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca. Would you tell me, why is it that you returned home to the states and you didn't visit Mecca? Well, I, I intended to get to Mecca during the Hajj season, the pilgrimages, when all of the Muslims, about a million of them go every year. But we got there about three weeks late, and it was all over. But we'll go next year when the pilgrimage time is up. And plus, we had to be here Sunday for this convention, and uh, we'll go the next time. But And plus, you're supposed to... Uh, get permission from your leader to go. I left, I believe after I got there, I wouldn't have been able to go because I didn't get permission from my leader, Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Malcolm X has said that it's time for the American Negro to fight back whenever he's attacked, and he has uh, called for the forming of rifle clubs mm -hmm. by Negroes to defend yes, themselves. How uh, do you feel about using violence to defend well, yourself? Well, I'll, I'll put the answer on you that my leader put on me, which is so beautiful. Everything he says is so excellent. You can't find no fault in it whatsoever. If you would, he wouldn't be here for 33 years without being proven wrong about anything. But he says that that's an awful foolish thing to do because, after all, we don't make no bullets. We don't make no rifles. We don't... Uh, uh, that it'd be impossible for us to get a rifle and fight somebody with machine guns and airplanes and bombs. So that'll be the last thing to do is to be violent in that way. Are you yourself against violence? Are you a conscientious objector? Well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not against violence when it comes to uh, defending yourself. If someone attacks me, then we are all taught to fight to death. But we are never aggressive. Uh, Muhammad Ali, the Army has rejected you as, uh, in the Army's terms, not qualified for military duty. Is that a final decision, or is there a chance that'll come up for review again? Mm, I don't know. That's up to the officials or the people mm. in Washington. They made the decision. Well, the Army didn't go into details. What do you think happened? I don't know. If they didn't go into details, I don't see where I should. <laughs> <laughs> that takes care of the Army. <laughs> Muhammad Ali, are you preparing to become a Muslim minister with the status similar to what Malcolm X had? Well, I don't really know what I'm here for. I don't know what my mission is. All my life I've been a, I would say, a little prophet-like in all of the fights I predict. I mean, I've, I'm always in tight spots. I'm always getting out of them. I never, never get hurt, and I'm always managing to do something that's the first, for the first time in history, and God controls my life. I don't know where I'm going or what I'm doing. I went into Cairo, Egypt, and, and uh, pyramids of Egypt have 3,200,000 blocks, and now the pyramid of Egypt have 3,199,000. They gave me a stone out of the pyramid of Egypt, and they gave me the top of the tallest, tallest mountain in Accra, Ghana, called Ho Mountain, overlooking all Africa. And I don't, when I went over there, millions of people were following me and pulling, turning over cars, and I don't, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know what my mission is. I don't know. I don't control my own life. I'm just going from day to day. And I might be a minister. I might not. And I don't know what I'm going to be. In just a moment, we'll have more questions for our guest, Cassius Clay, the world heavyweight boxing champion, now known as Muhammad Ali. We'll be right back. A question now from Sarah Slack of the Amsterdam News. Muhammad Ali. What effect do you think your being a Muslim will have on your next box office receipts? Well, let me see what effect. It will be the first real fight that the whole world was watching. I have people who will be coming here from Turkey, Baghdad, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, uh, Cairo, Egypt, uh, and many of uh, the Sudan, 
various uh, ambassadors have promised me that they will be at ringside. The whole Asiatic African world will be watching my next fight, and this will be the biggest, the next one will be the biggest fight of all fights. Uh, uh, Muhammad Ali, the number of deaths from injuries in the ring has caused many authorities to call for outlawing of boxing. What changes would you like to see uh, made in boxing regulations, perhaps to make the fight game safer? Well, the only thing I could see to make it safer would be for a fighter to be tested before a fight, like they should make him run five miles before a fight, and if he's not really a fighter, they should not let him fight. But people get killed in more things than fighting, such as uh, football, baseball, horse racing, car racing, and airplanes falling mm -hmm. out of the sky. But are there any changes you'd like to see made in ring yeah, regulations? Yeah, just take people that are not qualified and don't let them fight. Excuse mm -hmm. me, I, I, I'm wondering, you've said that you consider yourself not an American first, but if, if the chance came, would you fight for this country? Well, if somebody attacked the country, naturally I'd have to fight. Then, then you are not a conscientious objector in the sense of not taking arms for America, right? Well, I take arms for myself. If I mean, if somebody start fighting, I'd have to fight. Then you identify I, I yourself get killed. with yeah, I have America to fight. that much. Yeah. Sarah well, Slack. Whether it's on the street or, or anywhere, I'd have to fight if somebody attacked the country. Uh, Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X has formed a new black nationalist army movement. Will you consider joining his organization? You tell you, that's a crazy question. <laughs> no, you, I don't. I don't even talk about Malcolm X. He's not in our mind. He's the little. We don't worry about Malcolm X. We have too much to do. And he, uh, our leader, is a man of power. He is the man who taught Malcolm X everything he knows. And uh, to be foolish to even think like that. We don't even think about things like that. It cheapens us. I'm sorry, we don't have time for any more questions.